So, um, I will just start with a short presentation of, uh, to show you what I do at work and how we do it and a little bit about the concept we have and basically to show you that it's not that uh, for good test automation you have a lot of stuff around that what I will show you later. Uh, this is the mandatory slide, so um, I think around one quarter of that 50,000 employees um, works in IT. <coughs> then uh, what you have, we have, that's the facts from uh, mid-year, so we had back then 74 projects or different software projects it's inside the company uh, with more than or with almost 11,000 test cases and we just executed around 50% of all the test cases in uh, April and it's usually that's the middle what we do with execution Then uh, the evolution of test automation uh, at Credit Suisse was basically um, prior to 2008 we were in, in, in different projects. They had some, they had <coughs> test automation engineers, but that was always project specific and the solution was not reused and basically um, it's reinventing the wheel for every project. So with the time we got together and in 2010 we got together into a TAL specialist team that does now the test automation for all the projects of the bank. And the future is that we will um, more globally do it to work together okay. more globally work together uh, also with uh, America and Asia to, to use the same tools same frameworks and share the know-how that's uh, very abstract picture with lot of, lots of components inside. I should basically show you that we um, use um, multiple frameworks or tools on in the end. So um, test automation is an engineering discipline. So you don't, you cannot just use one tool that fits all. So you have to decide from project to project which tools you use and uh, maybe combine tools to get uh, to reach your goal. That's the overview about the page object pattern where I'm giving the code lab today. So basically uh, the requirements engineering defines the requirements and maybe also creates UI maps and uh, this is from the business need. So then development starts implementing their application and theoretically testing should now also start to create test cases out of these requirements. We're not yet there, but uh, we're going into the direction of this model. So, test um, manual test engineers will create test cases, or even from automation, we create test cases, and we then um, create an, an interface to a page object that just exposes the functionality we need to cover the requirements. 
based on the test definitions, we then also um, create the test case itself, but only using the function functionality from the interface. So as soon as the developer um, implemented the page and made the first deploy, it basically can create the page object and um, he needs to uh, just implement the interface and our or the tests from the testing area will then work or should work. <coughs> What's the conclusion of this uh, is that testing creates the page objects, uh, page object interfaces, creates functional tests and creates end-to-end -end tests based on this. The development create the page objects and do their unit tests and maybe also do continuous integration tests. So with the page object model you have some overlapping and <coughs> that's, mm, that's minimizing resource usage and yeah, avoids doing the same twice. For testing it means less maintenance uh, early involvement and reusing artifacts from development. From development it means improved staging quality, uh, improved requirements as you can directly compare the developer sees the interface and he will um, quickly see a difference when he did understand the requirement in a different way. And of course, reusing artifacts uh, from testing, mostly in continuous integration tests. So having end-to-end -end tests and functional tests running against the new version of the application on the staging server. For the project, it means improved overall quality, efficient use of resources, as you don't have development and testing too much separated and uh, you have a stable solution for long-term use because you have uh, less main maintenance costs. Yeah. So uh, now would be the time you can take out your laptops or at least the ones that have laptops Does anyone have, or does the one with laptops have the the VM started and ready? Continue? Yeah. Okay. Um, so if you open the code lab uh, the code lab files folder on the desktop and go to the folder uh, AUT, that means application under test, and right click on the start um, shell script and execute it. This should start the Jetty server and with the deployed uh, application for that we use for the test. So after this um, you can start Chromium. It's also on the desktop. 
and go to the URL localhost um, double point uh, 8080 slash wiki. Could I could all start this? Someone couldn't get on that start page. Okay, so I just can continue. Um, also start um, idea. It's also on the desktop. Uh, the folder 01 playground will be the place where you can develop your code and you see here um, the other f the other numbers are for the different the various stages we're going through um, in this code lab you also have this in the document um, in the folder CR5, that would be the finished implementation, including reporting. So, what is the target of this code lab? Uh, we want to automate uh, our test application, which is a wiki, uh, it's based on Jam wiki, and uh, we just pick a simple test case that will be the login test case and see how we could how we can use selenium with the page object pattern um, to create a maintainable maintainable um, code that is future proof for changes it's really a very simple um, example so you wouldn't you probably wouldn't do it this way um, if you have it in a real world application but if you have complex applications with maybe uh, hundreds of test cases to go through you um, you may consider using the page objects to uh, bring down your maintenance costs for the single scripts So let's go to the sample test case. You have it um, on page 7 in the script. Or you also have it in the wiki under test cases. So we now see um, Loading the start, we load the start page. We have to click on the login link because we are not logged in yet. Then we uh, have to fill in the credentials, so it's user and user for both username and password, and click on the login button. <coughs> After this, the username, and that's not the, it's the user's display name. In this case, it's also user, but with a capital U, um, should be displayed. And if that's our basically our uh, la our last verification point that the login worked, so now we can click on log out, and the login link um, is visible again. So the log out worked. So uh, now, maybe without reading too much into documentation, um, what are the relevant pages we need for that test case? Can anyone answer me this?
Yes. Um, which T-shirt size do you have? Sorry? Which T-shirt size do you have? You want to have a GDG Zurich shirt? That's a lot. <laughs> okay, so. Thank you. Okay, good. So it's the start page and the login page. And actually, it would also be um, an article page after the login for the verification. But we only need the top header navigation, and that's this bar. So we maybe somehow misuse the page object into having a having just a widget object of this widget on top. On top. Um, so if you look at what uh, what elements we need from them. Um, if we go to the start page, we don't need anything from this. We only need the need the top header navigation with the login link. So that's we covered in the in that widget object. And here on the login page we basically need the the username field, the password field, and the login button. And if we're logged in, we have uh, additional to the login link that's now not visible anymore uh, because it changes uh, based on the state, if logged in or not. We have the logout and we have the user's display name. So, um, we now create the interfaces for those two objects. Um, what functionality could we need? Someone knows? If we go to the login page again how how do we do a login yeah so that's basically the functionality we need set username set password click login Actually, we're doing user automation, so we're not doing the HTTP post. We're actually filling the username into the field and into the clicking, actually emulating the click on the button. Yes? Um, we will get to that later, but uh, you will see it. <coughs> there are several ways. Um, so basically you defined the functionality of the interface. And the same is for the top header navigation. We have there the login, the logout, both clicks, and we have to verify that the name is the same then as the name we expect the user. <coughs> so let's create the interface. For now um, 
we could we could have to, uh, we could start just from this point without knowing the application. We just now got the requirements out of a fi finished application. But you can imagine if you just have that requirements, um, maybe you have the requirement uh, the user must be able to log in. So you could write a function in the interface login which takes a username and a password and the page object implementation uh, basically then knows how to do the login. So, um, yeah, we're going to the interface. Uh, we're creating an interface I just call it I login page in the uh, you see the path in uh, interfaces package And um, yeah, so we define what we need to do. Uh, it's actually, in, I've written um, some more functions in the document, but ba just for this test case, we would only need to set username and set password. The reason why I'm giving back here myself uh, in the interface is that um, in the test case you then can use the dot notation to not always write object dot function but can write object dot function then in, on the new line just uh, dot next function. Enables chaining. Yeah, chaining. Exactly. Not everybody's favorite. Yeah, um, yes, that's true. But I usually do it so the the ones that use that classes can decide if he wants to use the return value or not. Okay. Um, it's a class. Yeah, I saw it. So. Um, yes. What else we need? Uh, we need to click on the login button. And yeah, there <coughs> we're already needing a different interface that's not existing yet so for now we can just make it mm. no we Um, abstract test is actually something that should already exist, I guess. <coughs> uh, no, <laughs> not at this point. Um, basically, we can copy this from here.
I will just show you what I have in this Yeah, we don't get it um, to compile yet. Uh, basically, this um, with giving that abstract test, or with giving the, an abstract test object, I'm actually giving the test case that will um, execute or that will call the click login. And with this, I, I'm able to return a different page object. Okay, so that's all we need. Um, and yeah, your turn would now be uh, creating the interface for the top header navigation. I don't know, as most of you don't have a laptop, do the ones with the laptop want to do it on their own or should we just skip this and continue? Okay, then, uh, yeah, then we close the playground and go directly to the, where I just unmark it as test source and mark the next stage as uh, the test source root. So let's close this. Um, we now have all the interfaces defined from from the test cases we need. So we're we can now start with uh, creating the actual tests. So. copy the abstract test. Actually, that's something I did forget in those two folders, it seems, that is missing. I will copy down the abstract test. and the utils and the test configuration from the next one. That's also something that will be needed for this stage. Okay. Um, we're now going to create our first test. So remember we only written the interface, so no actual implementation of the application. We call it login test and we extend the abstract test which just defines some basic functionality. Uh, which you can take a look later at home to see how it works and yeah um, basically that's it uh, we 
write the normal unit test. Um, here I'm. Okay, mm, it seems that I that the VM. I will shortly just copy paste because somehow my key mapping is not correct in the VM and on the Mac. Uh, okay. Um, you see, so the first step, we want to um, create that test case we looked at before. So the first step is we would do the login. So you see the login function is not yet existing, but that we will create later. Um, we have some test data in, in the config, so loaded through property file. Um, that's how we get it. Uh, you can take a look later how, how it exactly, or how I have done this. And um, with the lo at the end of the login, we get an article page. That's um, we're on the a generic article page in the application. Sorry, here, but we should be in a locked in state. If the login fails, we're still on the login page with that fields and an error message, of course. Yeah, and... We... Yeah, we basically... Um, missed here to check for the username. Or I missed it. In this case, uh, so uh, as the next step, or maybe let's uh, so we have the interface um, ithn menu which defines the top header navigation and We just, from the article page, the, the article page has a function called get top header navigation and we can get it. You can see in other test cases how you can just directly get it. Uh, on the top header navigation, we now, we say we need the functionality to verify that we're, that the username is as we expect. Um, and no, actually, I think that's um, yeah. Sorry for this. I think we um, I just have it in the later stage. So we here we do just the logout and give this page um, this object or this task case object uh, to get back a new page object. What you're now missing is the functionality of the login. I 
I again do copy paste because I have a hard time to figure out that key map. But I will go through the Okay, so the first step of the login is we have to get the page object. Um, so the abstract test has the functionality of get page object and we just pass the, the interface class to it and we will get the actual page object back. The page object has in this case um, I it has the functionality navigate to so it knows how it can get itself to the to the actual login page taking the URL from test configuration and we say set the username set the password we click the login and then we get back the uh, uh, usual article page and we we also check that there is no error displayed on the login page itself uh, so meaning if you if I enter a wrong if I enter wrong credentials you see that the error appears and we're still on the login page And yeah, after we verified that the correct user is locked, um, there is no error message appearing. We um, go to the art, we use the article page object and get to the top header nav navigation and verify the username. And as a return value, we give back the, the new page. And um, yeah, that's actually actually this part. And here we just do a log out again. That's the that's a complete test. So um, what you can maybe do at home is uh, create the same functionality for the admin user. Uh, it's just um, the you can read out the properties from task config properties. You see, I've just defined an admin user and a normal user. And this here below is the is the mapping. So I map uh, which interface name or which interface should uh, use which. Uh, implementation. With this you could um, create uh, different versions of your page object. Maybe you have two or three different releases at the same time um, in development and you also have a production release so you can have the same test run with different page objects. Uh, uh, the page obje objects based on the versions of your software. Okay. Um, yeah, that's it to the test. So we could actually just run it now, uh, but if we if we run it now, it will obviously fail because the page object itself is not yet implemented so it won't find any implementation to the uh, to the actual interface okay I did execute the wrong one it seems 
Uh, yeah, probably <coughs> got the class path from below because below is the is the page objects are implemented. So let's move on to the page objects, and I will. That's um, whose question was it uh, with the with the developer console in Chrome? It's, was it your question? So basically, that's what I use. There are different methods. You could even use Selenium uh, IDE to do this to record. I wouldn't recommend playback or not if you want to build a test suite that is, uh, is maintainable? Hmm? yeah that is maintainable and especially um, I know from projects who just um, let offshore create test case uh, after test case so maybe they had 100 test cases worked fine in that release but on the next release, they had to maintain 100 test cases because something changed in the application as intended. So they have to touch every script and record it again. It's called warm testing work. Write once, read now. Sorry? I, I, don't, I, <laughs> I didn't hear you. They are called warm tests write once read never read never yeah Perl used to be called okay. warm language you, you, would, you would write it once and you would never be able to understand what you wrote uh, okay no it's not you basically you're able to understand it's just um, you, it, it will be effort to um, re-record all that script or to maintain you can even uh, manually maintain there. If you save it in Selenese, it's not that hard to edit an HTML table, but it's work that has to be done. So um, I usually do with the inspect element and read out the values I need. Um, if you have an ID, use the ID because the ID is something that's mostly unique. It still works if it's not unique, but it will fail in a validation test. But uh, for example, the name field, um, there are um, usually uh, can have the same name. It's bad practice, but uh, it happens often out in projects. So in this case, I would use the ID login username. For the next one, I would do the same using the ID. And then we get to the first element we need that will give us some headers. We can we can identify it, but uh, the the value is what's uh, uh, what's displayed. So we can't really rely on it that it's same on every language and if your application is multi-language you may have to consider if you really want to use it as an identification for the element itself and um, as I told you the name is often misused and uh, has mm, is not unique but in this case uh, on this page at least it's unique and it's the only way we can really identify would be searching an input element that has the type submit and name function even a, func 
the name function uh, sounds very generic, so I, w I would recommend to tell the developer, or if you're yourself the developer, change this to something meaningful. So every field should be, uh, should describe itself uh, that, that it's uh, good, testable. Um, okay. Normally, yes. I've seen a lot of applications, so <laughs> I just I that's just experience. But yes, you're right. Usually, it would be logical that one submit. But um, what I often have is even I don't have a type submit, so it's handled in JavaScript. That's maybe could even be just a text element. Uh, and or an image. Hmm? Or an image. Or an image. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I would draw. Mm, yes, I wouldn't rely on standards. So you can you can um, try to teach the developers that they should stick to standards, but Usually, um, you always have cases where they don't want or just don't <coughs> listen, and you still have to do your job and test application. And if you're in the good position that you're the developer, then you can actually change it and make your code testable, even if you don't have to test it, but maybe someone else has has to test it or at least I hope that someone else that's at least someone does test it before it goes into production <laughs> okay um, yeah I would say f um, from the time it's almost 10 o'clock is this correct Ten o'clock? Yeah. No. <laughs> that clock is wrong. Yeah, it would be sure ten o'clock so. in the morning. <laughs> okay, um it's half past uh, uh, six. Half past six. Yeah, we'll uh, just have a we have a walk through through the object itself. Just a quick note to everyone. Uh, are you all aware that there's an after party? Yeah. Yes. And it starts around 7 at the bar called Nelson's. Uh, it's just a few meters from here, I think. Uh, you can walk from here. And with your badge, you get free drinks. So you're all invited. Sorry, I, I just want to make no sure. No problem. For people. Mm. Okay. So, um, actually, for the ones that have opened the VM, can uh, just go to the pay to zero four page objects, and we can have a look at the login page. So, this is now where Selenium actually comes into place. Uh, you see here, um, I declare the elements that we need. So we need the username field, we need the password field, we need the login button, and we need the error message. You can define your elements in different ways. So you can use the ID, like I use it on the two um, input fields. You can use the name how I use it now on the button with the generic name function and um, that's what usually um, is the, the rescue if, if you really have to have troubles identifying the <coughs> object with a unique identifier um, you can 
you usually get to it with using X path. Okay. Um. Okay, so um, with uh, I don't know if you know XPath expressions. Okay, um, <coughs> they are pretty. Uh, if you do it right, there you can write very good XPath expression. The only problem is that they are readable like regex, like regular expressions. So if you know it can read it. If you don't know it, you may have a hard time to read it. But you can always use comments to explain something. Then... Um, Good. Um, okay, we do it very fast. Um, then um, here it should um, okay uh, we have the functionality so in the abstract page object uh, we have the functionality send keys which just allows uh, allows us to uh, send a key to an element and setting a flag to clear that element before so if you want to fill in if you want to fill in uh, for example, the username, and maybe the developer forgot some debugging code, and the username field has an initial value. Um, good, that would be a bad case then. Uh, but um, if for some reason there is already something in the field, we want to clear it and we want to write the new text into it. You can, if you have a... Okay. Um, yes. Here, you see, if... Um, we just do a send key on the element with the value, but if the clear flag is true, we uh, delete everything that the value already has, or that the element already has. And um, yeah, basically that's it. Um, here we have with the error message, we just use the function get text. And in this case, I'm checking if there is no error message. Um, accessing the error message object will cause a no such element exception that I want to catch. And um, if I return no, null, this means I don't have any error message here. Maybe not really the best practice to return null, but um, login is also very easy. So uh, the click login, I mean, you just 
use the functional the function click of that element and here is uh, why I use the abstract test because the abstract test has the functionality to get the page object based on a on the interface and will then return the resulting uh, the resulting page or the expected resulting page and the navigate is just uh, accessing the driver um, directly which is the base element so this will be the Internet Explorer driver or HTML unit driver or whatever driver you use for for your test last part uh, let's run the test or the tests so I just call the various test cases from uh, ant using uh, the normal JUnit ant tasks and as you see we have automated the application with the various test cases we defined before. And <coughs> one test case is even failing. So any questions to this? Yes, I will um, shortly bring some stuff uh, back to the hotel and then I come to the after party. Is there, is there already a plugin, like a Maven plugin or a Jenkins plugin to capture the results of, of the, of the test? Um, actually, um, here, um, just for demo purposes, I use, uh, uh, I use, um, J unit, but um, at work we don't use J unit, so I mu we mostly use a web test, a canoe web test, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, we're s uh, eBay uses uh, test ng, which allows for some more functionality uh, in regards to functional testing. <coughs> Because JUnit is targeted more to unit tests and not to functional or end-to-end -end tests which depend have dependencies on <coughs> each other mm -hmm. and maybe need to run in a certain order and conditions. You know, like tests or, or organizing test uh, suites being dependent on one, one or yeah, we can have yeah. later a talk about this because that's a completely different topic. So the, that's why I showed the presentation before. You see that that what I'm showing here is just the, the part that's really at the end um, actually doing the work on the target application. But um, around there is a lot of more stuff. Thank you.